Friday at Qatar is over and we've had both practice and sprint qualifying. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from Friday. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top teams later on, so please do stick around for that. Yep, Friday is over and it was an interesting day. Qatar this year is run a few weeks later and it looks like it has made a huge difference as the temperatures are much more like what we usually see instead of the highs of last year. That should help the tyres survive a lot better than what we saw a year ago. And sprint qualifying has just ended and the fastest driver was Lando Norris. But how did the times evolve during the session? Well, let's take a look at all the times set by Lando Norris in the McLaren. As usual, in sprint qualifying, SQ1 and SQ2 were done on medium tyres before the drivers went out on soft tyres for SQ3. So, expect there to be a larger variance in lap times than what we usually see. But now, let's compare the first lap in SQ1 to the pole lap in SQ3, and let's see where the differences were. When you compare the two laps, you can get a sense of how much more grip the soft compound of tyres have compared to the mediums. In the medium and high speed corners, you can really see how Lando in SQ3 on the soft tyres just has more grip, especially in the final few high speed corners here. On the medium tyres, Lando really has to back off, but on those soft tyres, Norris is almost flat out in some of those corners. Altogether, from SQ1 to SQ3, Norris improved the times by 1.7 seconds. Lando's pole lap in sprint qualifying also was a staggering 3.4 seconds faster than last year. I think this is mainly due to the conditions being a lot cooler this year, with them running it later in the year. But even so, it is very impressive and once again goes a long way to show how the rate of improvement is in Formula 1. So we've seen how the times compared during the sprint qualifying session, but now let's take a look at the top speeds that the teams are able to reach, so that we can see who is looking fast in a straight line and who's not looking so fast. And what can we see here? Well, what we can see here is that the fastest car in a straight line was actually a tie between Alpine, Haas and Sauber, with VCarb just 1km per hour slower in a straight line, showing just how close it is in the midfield, and also the fight for 6th place. Not just in terms of points, but also straight line speed performance is very similar. When it comes to the front runners though, the fastest car in a straight line was actually Mercedes as they were able to reach 324 kilometers per hour. Ferrari and McLaren both reached 322 kilometers per hour and Red Bull was with 323 kilometers per hour. In the midfield then, what team was looking good for the sprint race? Well, it has to be said that once again Pierre Gasly in the Alpine has impressed as he is starting the sprint race in 8th place, but right behind him is Alpine's main rival in the fight for six in the Constructors' Championship, as Nico Hülkenberg in the Haas is just behind him. And things between these two teams is just getting more and more intense and getting more and more close. But how did Gasly just edge out Hülkenberg? Well, when you look at the two laps, you can actually see that there is not really a lot to tell between them, and they are very, very close. Gasly is just a faster car down the pit straight, but in some of the heavy braking zones and at the midpoint of the lap, Hülkenberg just comes back at Gasly and becomes a faster driver. But as the speed starts to build back up with the higher speed corners, Gasly just starts to edge back out against Hülkenberg, showing really how well Alpine have done at improving their car in the high speed areas, which was really a weakness for them not that long ago. In the sprint race, I expect another close fight between the two. Hopefully, the Alpine engine, though, can at least survive in Qatar. I just want to say, if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. But now, let's get back to the video and let's talk about Mercedes. For Mercedes, then, the sprint qualifying result was actually really impressive for George Russell, who is definitely ending the season on a high. But how are they looking potentially for the sprint race? Well, it has to be said they are definitely not looking as strong as where they were in Las Vegas, which is what you can see when you look at the times of the two McLaren drivers 
and compare it to George Russell. This is of course from practice. And when you look at these laps in the longer runs, it does show that Merck right now are looking like they could be back to where they were before Las Vegas. So where they were a few weeks ago, which honestly I wouldn't say is a huge surprise for them. That being said though, George Russell did do a stunning job and almost took sprint pole position as he is lining up alongside Lando Norris for sprint race. And honestly, it is going to be a lot of fun to watch George in the race. George doesn't really have to worry about the Constructors' Championship, so I do think there is a chance that he goes, goes all out at the start to try and take the lead. But I don't expect that even if he does take the lead, that he will be able to hold it, as I think the race pace of the McLaren is just a bit too strong. For Red Bull then, it looks as though they have some work to do to improve their car after the sprint race to prepare for Grand Prix qualifying, as Max Verstappen is lining up only in 6th place. But thankfully for him, he is already the world drivers champion, so I don't think he actually minds too much. As for his teammate Sergio Perez, it is another fantastic Q1 elimination as he continues to take the have a break, have a Kit Kat slogan a little bit too seriously. But how did Max lose out to Lando? Well, let's compare the two times. And when you look at these two times, it's actually very, very interesting. Down the pit straight, Verstappen was just a faster car. But then in all of the braking zones and through the slower parts of the circuit, Look at the Delta. Norris in the McLaren just managed to edge out Verstappen and build a bit of a gap to him. However, as the speed starts to build back up in sector 3, Verstappen starts to reel back the gap to Norris, showing really what I said in my preview video. The Red Bull is still a very, very strong car with high speed downforce, but it was let down in the slower corners. In the sprint race, I honestly don't know what to expect from Verstappen. I don't think he will really be any higher than 5th place. As for Perez, uh, he might finish in the top 10, but probably not. For Ferrari, practice looked fantastic as Leclerc was by some distance the fastest driver, and I think they surprised a lot of people. Then in sprint qualifying, reality hit a little bit, and Leclerc went fast early, but used up his tyres, and teammate Carlos Sainz was a little bit more gentle and brought the tyres in slowly for a push lap at the end of the session, and it looks like that worked out for him. For Ferrari though, I want to talk about practice, because they were strong on those hard compound of tyres when they did the long runs, and I think it will be setting them up quite nicely for the Grand Prix. In sprints, I do expect that they will probably be using the medium tyres, but for the Grand Prix when they need the hard tyres, I expect that they will be looking competitive, but they just need to make sure they can qualify well. Let's compare then the time of Leclerc to Sainz to see how Carlos just beat his teammates. Once again, as usual with these two, there is very little to tell between them, and actually Leclerc had just edged out teammate Sainz until the final corner, as it looks like Carlos had just got better traction for the final corner. For Ferrari, they're in a solid position right now, but it will not be enough if they want to win the Constructors' Championship. Finally, for McLaren then, things are looking very solid for them. They looked very, very strong in practice, and they were strong in sprint qualifying. They are pretty much perfectly positioned for this weekend, as Lando Norris took sprint pole, and Piastri is P3. And with the pace, it looks like they have for Grand Prix qualifying, they should lock out the front row, and the race should be pretty straightforward for them. Let's compare the sprint qualifying lap of the two McLaren drivers to see how Norris outmatched teammate Piastri. And when you look at these two laps, honestly, I think Piastri was overall the better driver around the lap. However, there was a few little errors which cost him position to Norris, particularly on the exit of turn two, as Norris gets much better traction. And from there, Norris gains all the time that he really needs to beat his teammate. In the sprint race and also the Grand Prix, I expect that McLaren will be unbeatable, which is why I said if Russell gets Norris at the start, I don't think it will make a massive difference and I think Norris will just get back past Russell. So with that in mind then, what are my predictions for the sprint race? Well in P5 I'm going to go for Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari, P4 will be Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, P3 will be George Russell in the Mercedes, P4 
P2 will be Oscar Piastri, and I do think Lando Norris will win the sprint race for the Qatar Grand Prix. But those are my thoughts. The question is, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.